Ecke. A couple of years ago I made this video comparing German screwdrivers. Back then my two wall looked like this, whereas my wall today looks more like this. And that's why I thought to revisit this topic. I tried to make this video short and snappy, so please ask me for any info if you think I'm missing something. Let's start. I'm not doing these in any specific order, but of course it's the first screwdriver I've picked not from Germany, but Sheffield, England. Made in 1961, a true beauty of its time with a beach handle and brass color. Sadly, the shaft is pitted over the time, but these style of old school screwdrivers are perfect when dealing with any kind of hand plane still to this day, as the tip seems to fit perfectly. The next one is truly made here in Hamburg, Germany, as a good friend of mine turned this lovely handle out of three pieces of wood and a piece of copper pipe. The shaft and locking hex for bits are from Wolfkraft. I love its chunky nature as it delivers lots of torque so I can use it with a small chuck for finer hand drilling or such on music instruments and that sort of jazz. Dandy and handy. Okay. The title said screwdrivers made in Germany. Let's start with these beauties made by Elora. Not really a famous brand overseas, but they ooze quality. This is clearly a vintage set as you can tell by their beautiful red acetate handles. I really do love them as they feel like a worry stone in your hand. The quality of the sharp engravings is marvelous. And yeah, I bought them used so they have seen some use over time, but they still hold up nicely. To this day you can buy Elora tools. And most of them are still made in Germany. I fancy these hex nut drivers and I'm glad that I've picked them up immediately as I saw them. So, why don't you also check out Elora tools while browsing for new gems to fill your shop with? The next one is bridging a gap in my Elora hex driver set and despite being ELC branded, whoever this company was or still is, this bugger is clearly made by Felo. And the only company I know of that used the textured finish on the red acetate handles. To enhance your grip I guess in oily environments as they're chemically stable. I am not fond of this handle style, but the rest is rinse and repeat of all the things I've said about Elora. And you can still get them new and blue, branded by looks in any OB hardware store. I think. Last time I've checked it was still the case, but I don't know if they haven't changed that already. I wanted to get this set badly, as it was the last acetate handle by Filo I know of, but as I ordered these, it was already too late as I've received it with their comfort grip. Well, if you're just like me and need red acetate hands badly in your life, you still can get them from Austria. Stubai is better known for their woodworking hand tools, but they also offer a wide range of other tools like kitchen knives and climbing gear. The handles are awesome, crystal clear with a great print quality. But if you ask me, stick with the hex driver as the black painted tips don't hold up too well. But still a good choice for everyday use. Now it's time for the OG. I mean, the real OG. I don't know from when they are exactly, but I'm happy to own them. Just beautiful hollow ground standard screwdrivers, nickel plated with a comfy wooden handle. And blue. And no, I don't know about the standard, as I own this beautiful Bats of ESM3 stubby, and as you can see, the tips are not similar to each other. And no, my Stahlville VSM screwdrivers won't match either with that numbered system. They are all. <clears throat> they all are beautiful, but for standard woodworking screws, nothing seems to fit better in my slotted screws than the OG Viha ones. But 
Before I move on with these, I must tell you about my love for Belzer. In my opinion, the best tools you could get. And these are the reason my love for red acetate handles began. With this assortment of Viha red handles, I can show you a few iterations through the decades, beginning with this one made in the 80s. Still with a Western Germany stamp, I find it fascinating that these handles were rounded over at the tip, but a few years later they decided to put a cylindrical shape there. I'm guessing to make tool holding easier. Coming with these are the matte chrome finish. Moving on in time, they added their new logo with a barcode at the back. I mean, cash registers got barcode readers now. And in the last iteration, they've put the barcode on the front to save pennies in the making. And these pennies are also the reason for the growing flash of their molding. But ooh, look at that laser hardened tip. A beauty. I don't understand why they are out of fashion and discontinued by most. These handles are chemically resistant and better grip is not an argument if you know that small screws are almost always over tightened anyways. And pretty. Darn it! Are they pretty with a black shaft? <laughs> Via, how does it come that your best tools are from the past and discontinued? But your mother and stuff is also great, like this VDE set I own. The tips look fantastic after years of use, and the very round, almost ball-like shape at the handle has good grip and fits very nicely in any hand. Like its vintage counterpart that is also hex-shaped to hinder it from rolling. They also had laser tips back then. What is not to laugh about it? I mean, I definitely prefer them over Vera. Focom combines a very classy handle with an extraordinary shaft that makes me like it very much. But I honestly only use it to open cans of paint. CK offers one of the last available acetate handles that are still made in Germany. But their handles feature clearly visible flow lines within. They claim to be shatterproof, but I won't test it. <clears throat> but I like the tumbled or sandblasted look with their black tip and matte chrome plating. All in all, neatly done. Again, here's some Vera. And of course, we have to have a closer look at this Viha acetate handle I'm in love with. The tips are lacking on these, missing the laser marks and featuring grinding marks instead. Weird. Let's move over to Switzerland. And this is what they offer. Yeah, this one is Hoffman branded as they sell it as their in-house brand, but they come all from the same factory. Honestly, I'm not a fan of those. I'm not into their thin ripped handle design. The used acetate smells badly, and even though they are somewhat pretty and well made, I think they're too expensive, by far. All in all, I can't wrap my head around their hype, but hey, at least I've tried it. Hot set. Do I really need to say anything else? I'm, I'm in awe with it. If I need a modern screwdriver, I'll grab this. Just kidding, just kidding. But their hexanamic handles are something different. Matte chrome finished, coated rust-proof tips, laser engraved. Ooh, if I need a modern screwdriver, I chose those over anything shown today as they are very nicely rounded and these notches add so much grip. But hey, watch out for the cheap knockoff variants. They started to produce from Far East. Never touch them, but hey, what do you expect when a set costs the same as this screwdriver? On second place would be Stahlwille. Because of the same reasons while talking about hard set, the tips are only slightly better and I do miss here some notches for the grip. A close third would be Viha, by the way. 
These tools seem to be still made with care, just seamlessly molding different materials together so the handles are comfy and putting labels in the end so you can identify your screwdriver in any case or bag you put it in. Now let's knock on some wood. Yeah, wooden handle screwdrivers. Same, same, but different. They all look the same because I'm betting that these screwdrivers all come from the same factory somewhere in Remscheid and everyone is allowed to put the label on it. And I don't care about them. They all seem the same. They are all great, of course. They're chrome plated, good quality. You can pound on the end because the shaft is going through. They have a leather tap so the wood doesn't splinter. What, what, what should I say about these? They are there for decades and still last. I talked about Fakum briefly already and if you can get those Isoryl handles as they are called here in Germany, you should buy them. They get discontinued as it seems and almost nobody has them in stock right now or they are just a few left and if you're lucky even on sale. Their laser hardening process is more subtle than Viha does theirs, but their seam lines are also growing here when comparing older to newer hand tools over time. But hey, still great stuff. Yeah, yeah, it seemed that I ditched Vera entirely, but I own an OG screwdriver that was still made in Germany. Normally I don't like the handles too much, but in this chunky multi-bit holding version, I dig it. Those were great back then. I'll link all reviews down in the comments. Oh yeah, and I didn't forget about Heiko with their fake Western Germany print that wraps off during shipping and it looks the part but the quality isn't that great after all. Oh well. And here is a random Viha stubby. Just for the lols. And as shown in the background, it is time for some delicious coffee. There's a link down below if you want to support this channel with a tasty cup of coffee. Thank you for all the support. This is, by the way, my retirement box. Full of honorable mentions. Ah, this pretty fella was already shown because of all the right reasons. These are two examples of Athlete. I tried them out as a substitute of my growing acetate addiction. They're cheap and just okay. And here is some blue acetate from Ghidorah. In a really weird shape, Ghidorah makes the biggest, weirdest, most uncomfortable handles that I know of. Why? J just why? Who is this made for? Witte. Ah, of course. I almost forget about those. I love these. Clearly everything with Western Germany marks is great. This Wiesent labeled Viha 3K series is one of the first screwdrivers I've ever bought. I cut the isolation off because it got damaged, otherwise still usable and perfect for landing. And yeah, I also own a PB Swiss isolated screwdriver. I hate that thing. I mean, look at that flex, it behaves like a gummy worm in your hand. How can anyone work with this? Ooh, Belza. Look at its flex. It doesn't flex at all. This screwdriver is the reason I've skipped my green Dovidat one before. They are identical. I love them both, but they are too long gone from the market and out of unobtainium. They're very hard to find, so it doesn't really make sense to show them at all. 
Here is an isolated Viha Classic screwdriver. They're also discontinued right now. They're nice and dandy, but I still prefer the real deal. Red acetate overall. And indeed, they do feel different even though they have the same geometry. And isn't this just pretty to look at? Ooh, stuff from China. Most of you guys hate Xiaomi, I know. But look at this beautifully anodized aluminum. Ah, I love <laughs> Ooh, stuff from China. Most of you guys hate Xiaomi, I know. But look at this beautifully anodized aluminum. And it contains lots of bits despite its small form factor. Because it is well thought out. I'm impressed by this thing and I'm glad to own it. It feels great in your hand. And in comparison to this chunky Vera multi-bit thingy, this one fits better in your pocket and this one has clearly more style still. Yeah, I guess this was finally it. And that wraps it up for today. I hope you liked my small little insight of screwdrivers and handles in comparison. Oh, you're still there. I didn't want to show you this green Siemens thingamabob that resembles a screwdriver, because it is not, as it is for poking contacts while doing electrical work. And now you've seen it anyways.